Braving the whistling breeze, the intermittent rain and the eerie laughter of the spirits, King Vikram reached the old tree and climbed it and brought the corpse down again. Then he began crossing the deserted cremation crown. Although the night was ever fully dark, flashes of lightning helped him to find his way. Suddenly observed the vampire which possessed the corpse, O King, I do not know the benefit that would accrue you from this difficult labor of yours. It is not unusual to see one's labors going in vain. I can give you example of a King Amar. Be pleased to pay your attention to the story that should reduce the rigor of your labor. The vampire went on narrating the story. Prince Amar was a lover of adventure. In the frontiers of his kingdom was a large forest and in the forest lived a certain tribe. So many stories circulated about the members of the tribe describing them as ferocious people or as experts in magical arts. Nobody knew much about them for hardly anybody ever entered the forest for the fear of them. On the other hand, no member of the tribe ever came out of the forest. Prince Amar once dared into the forest alone. To his amazement, he found that far from being ferocious, the tribal were gentle and courteous. The prince lived among them for a few days during which he fell in love with the daughter of the tribal chief. He proposed to marry her. The chief agreed to his proposal and the marriage was performed in the tribal style. Thereafter, the prince returned to his palace with his bride, but in the palace, the tribal princess felt like a fish out of water. She was not at all accustomed to the etiquette, the conventions and the ceremonies of the palace. Although there were a number of maids to attend upon her, she rarely spoke to any of them. She missed her forest and the hills and the open air. However, she was happy as long as Prince was with her. Prince Amar hoped that by and by his wife will get accustomed to the new environment. He did his best to explain to her the disciplines of the palace life and her duties as she would be the queen. The tribal princess would hear everything with patience but would not remember to carry out any of the instructions of the prince. She would however insist that the prince should spend most of his time with her. The prince obliged her as much as possible but he is spending much time with the mint his inability to give due attention to his duties as the crown prince. The ministers complained to him about it. He promised to cut short his daily hours with the tribal princess, but that was not easy. Once while Amar's father, the king, was away from the capital, secret information reached Amar that a neighboring king was preparing to attack his kingdom. Amar immediately called an emergency conference of his ministers and generals to devise ways to defend the kingdom. Hours passed while they sat discussing their plans. Suddenly the tribal princess dashed into the chamber and began dragging the prince away by his arm. Complaining, what are you doing here leaving me all alone? The ministers were taken aback. The prince blushed and quietly left with his wife. But once inside her apartment, the prince took her to task for embarrassing him before his ministers. All these days I have been trying to teach you how to behave, but you are incorrigible. If you do not mend your ways, I will send you back to your forest, he threatened. The tribal princess kept looking vacant. It was obvious that she did not understand what was wrong in her behavior, although she was pained at her husband's rebuke. But Prince Amar had no time then to mind the mood of his wife. He had to keep busy in alerting his army. As soon as the enemy struck, the prince himself led his army to a valiant defense of his kingdom. The battle continued for only two days, ending in a total defeat of the enemy. Soon thereafter, the king fell ill and the prince had to spend all his time in looking after his government. His wife felt more and more lonely and sad. The prince was full of pity and sympathy for her but he had no time to keep company with her. He repented for having married a girl from the forest whose lifestyle was so much different from his. Once a year, there took place a festival in front of the palace. Thousands of people turned up for the occasion. The main attraction of the festival was the prince himself. There was a huge stone mace which no other man in the kingdom could even lift up. The prince not only wielded it with ease, but also fought with an elephant with the mace in hand and ultimately killed the elephant. The prince brought his wife over to the balcony to witness the festival. Festivals take place in our forest too, but I had never seen such a large crowd, remarked the tribal princess. 
The large crowd is here to witness a display of my strength, said the prince with pride. The fight between the prince and the elephant began. As soon as the prince lifted up the huge mace, the crowd applauded him. Then after a while, when he succeeded in beating the elephant to death, the crowd cheered him lustily and the defining applause continued for a long time. But looking at his wife, the prince saw that she was laughing. The prince was surprised. Upon joining her on the balcony, he asked her why she is laughing. Why did the people cheer you so much? She asked in return. Did you not see my feet? I wielded a mess which nobody can lift up and killed such a mighty animal with that. Is that not cause enough for the crowd to praise me? Asked the prince. But we have in our forest several people who could have performed such a feat, commented the tribal princess. Are there? Well then, go away at once. Bring with you one of them. I will give away my kingdom to him, if he manages to lift up the mace. But if you fail to bring any such man, then you need not come back yourself, shouted the prince. He had felt terribly hurt by the comment of the princess at a moment when multitudes of people held him as the greatest hero. The prince lost no time in arranging to send the tribal princess to her father's forest. He repented a few months later and sent for his wife, but she refused to come. The prince concluded that she felt shy because she had not been able to find out a man who could match him in strength and valor. Fifteen years passed. The prince had in the meanwhile become the king, but he continued to show his feet during the annual festival. Once during the festival, when the king had just killed the elephant, a boy come from the crowd said in challenging tone, O oh king, I can do what you have done. King Amar looked surprised and annoyed. When he found that the speaker was a mere boy, he said scoffingly, You need not kill an elephant. If you can just lift up the mace, I will surrender my throne to you. The boy stepped forward, lifted up the mace more easily than the king himself and hurled it in a hundred yards away. King Amar stood stunned. In the meanwhile, a woman who wore tribal dress had come out of the crowd. She spoke out, Had I not told you that we had in our forest men who could easily perform such feats? The king recognized the voice. It was his wife's. He knelt down before her and said, Pardon me my folly, O queen. Then he embraced the boy who was none other than his own son. He led the queen and the prince to his palace. The vampire ended the story at his point and asked, O king, if there were several men in the forest who could do what the king did at the festival, how is that the tribal prince failed to bring anybody during the long period of 15 years? Evidently she had uttered a lie, but if that was so, what for did King Amar beg her to be pardoned? I warn you, O king, if you know the answer and yet choose to keep mum, your head will be shattered into pieces. Then King Vikram answered, the tribal princess had not spoken any lie. There were indeed several men in a tribe who were as strong as Amar, if not stronger than him. She did not bring anybody with her earlier because she did not want her husband to forfeit his kingdom to a stranger. She was pregnant when she left for the jungle. Now that her son had sufficiently grown up to answer her husband's challenge, she led the boy to the festival. The boy, after all, was to inherit the kingdom in the natural course. Thus, she proved herself to be truthful. At the same time, her husband was not required to lose the kingdom. The vampire gave the king the slip as soon as he had finished giving the answer. King Vikram turned back and again advanced towards the tree. So friends, if you like the story, please subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon so that you will get similar such stories regularly.